Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind-the-scenes videos and two-minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. Well, super excited to continue our blind spotting streak and have actress Candace Nicholas Lipman on the show. She plays Janelle on Blind Spotting, the TV show. And uh, first off, Candace, can we have you talk about your character on Blind Spotting for the audience uh, that's listening? Hey, y'all. Hi. Uh, so, <laughs> Janelle, Janelle is, oh, I love Janelle. Janelle is yeah. someone who's multidimensional, multifaceted um, human being. She is equal parts town and worldly. You know, she the type that, listen, I'll throw hands if I need to, but I'll also pray to the ancestors on your behalf. You know what I'm saying? So she's, she's just... Um, um, extremely unapologetic in who she is. And that's something I absolutely love about her. She's extremely unapologetic. She's very loyal. Um, she's very open, you know, to just receiving a lot. She's very open to learning. Um, and right now she's just returning back to Oakland from being gone in Bali for five years. So it's like, this is a really big shift for her. And she's currently in this place of trying to rediscover herself. She thought that she found herself when she was in Bali. Not going to give too much away with that. Uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, some things transpired out there that now made her come back home. And now she's back lost again, you know? So she's just really trying to reacclimate herself back, being back home. And now home is not what she remembered it was before she left, you know? So there's just a lot going on on top of Miles being in jail. You know, her best friend Smash is like having to go through this dramatic life shift with her and baby boy. It's just, it's like a lot is happening. My brother Colin is gone, yeah. you know? I'm like, what the feesy? So it's just a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I mean, it's, it's typical Bay shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She act, listen, Janelle actually says that, you know, just bake it's just, it's just, yeah. it's just what, what we do out here. Um, yeah. I, I wanted, I did a little, you know, as I, I tell guests, I did a little snooping around and reading oh and no, no, no. I, I, I love this story <laughs> that you, after the um, first audition, you wrote on your wall. Is this correct? You manifested this role. Can you talk about manifest? manifestation because we love talking about man man yes. and firm believers firm yes. believers hey, yes. amen i love it yes yeah. so my faith is a big part of my journey um of course as an artist and manifesting i don't know it's like that thing where you know that god has ordained you or called you for this specific thing in life and so even when, you know, I have been homeless, I have been hungry, like I have never given up this dream because I know that this is what I'm called to do is to be an artist and to change the world, God willing, through my art, you know? So when I had got this audition and I saw the, the sides for Janelle, I was like, oh my goodness, Jesus, like, I feel like I am Janelle. Like, I feel like this role is for me. And I literally wrote it and I literally have it framed right now, y'all. Like I kept the piece of paper, I framed it and everything. But at the time it wasn't framed, right? So I just wrote on a piece of paper, Candace Nichols Litman set to star as Janelle in the blind spotting series. Mm -hmm. And I put it up there on my wall. Now, the thing that people don't know is manifestation is really like a work in progress. Like you have to continue to speak life over that thing that you are believing for, even when it looks like it's not going to happen. And a lot of my actors out there can probably understand or relate to this. Oftentimes, a lot of these auditions, it looked like it might happen and then you hear nothing. And that was kind of my situation with getting cast as Janelle. Like I got great feedback. They loved me in the producer session. It was all good. And I was like, oh my goodness, Jesus, I feel like this is it. This is it. And then some weeks went by and I didn't hear anything. And I was like, okay, God, 
but I still believed in my spirit that I was Janelle. So I never took that piece of paper down. I kept looking at it, even in the broke down place where I was living, even though I didn't have money to feed myself, I still was believing, Father God, I am going to book this part, you know? And on top of that part, that portion of it with manifesting, I had always believed that I am a series regular. So this was something that I was already manifesting over my life. And I had to get to a point through all these auditions, all the no's I got, all the getting pinned and getting unpinned in the producer session and the chemistry, like always being always so close. It can be really devastating to your spirit, you know? Um, and so what I had to do was shift my perspective. I said, okay, Candace, Stop putting all of your faith in what the role is and just believe that you already are. So I decided to shift my perspective and say, God, I am a series regular, but the role that you decide to bless me with is your business. That's not my business. I have no control over that. So I relinquish that to you. And I just believe by the God that if this role is for me and it's meant to be, you're going to open the door for it. But no matter what, I am a series regular in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to walk in that power, believing that I already am, even before I get the role. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're done now. I mean, that was. Yeah. All that right. Was, well, guess I'll was, just drink my wine then. <laughs> that was peak. That was peak Candace. Drop the mic. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I love hearing that story because uh, Janelle, the character that you play is also just this very spiritual being. She, yes. I noticed she has mala beads hanging from her. Yes. You're, you're, she's into meditation and all these, you know, mm -hmm. so it's really cool that you had that connection with her as well on top of, you know, being from the Bay and all these other things. Right, right, right. Um, but um, but uh, I wanted to talk about uh, your thoughtfulness as an actress, you know, it's not just a job for you. You really are very specific about the roles that you choose. Yes. And um, I want to know in the, in the case of Janelle, um, what kind of input did you have? Because Rafa has spoken, everybody's spoken about how it was such a collaborative effort, mm -hmm. this show. And yes. like, so what kind of input did you have to really make Janelle that authentic character for you? Um, I had, I was blessed with the privilege to give input from what she's wearing to how her hair is going to look to um possible line changes like you know this don't really flow I don't feel like Janelle would say this like this can I may I have the permission to change this or try a take saying it this way you know I'm, I'm so grateful. Yes. Just like everyone has already been telling you guys, extremely collaborative and very safe working environment. Like it allowed us as creatives to really flourish because we weren't stifled within our art. Like we weren't told like, no, this is the way we wrote it. So this is the way you perform it, which as actors, you're not really given this permission to be so free in your art. And especially when you're developing a character from scratch, so to speak, I am forever grateful to Raphael and David for allowing me that space to say, you know, hey, is it okay in episode six? I, I see Janelle rocking a headscarf. Like as a black woman, you know, we do that. Like if we just chilling in the house, I'm like, she's just chilling in the house. She's not going anywhere. I don't want her having on heavy makeup. I in real life don't wear makeup, you know? So I just, I wanted everything to be with her so authentic and real. So that way when everybody is watching Janelle, they like, dang, that's my sister. That's my cousin. Like that I am her, you know? So I'm very, very grateful. I, I was able to have a lot of um, input and creative control in a sense of developing Janelle. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, I love you. Can we have mm -hmm. you on every week? <laughs> very yeah, cool, yeah. All right, it could be therapy, therapy with Candace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a new bit for Bitch Talk every yes. week. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, we found your new part. It's on our show. Um, <laughs> it pays nothing, but- Series you know, regular. We'll, well, maybe we could find a wine sponsor. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, your background uh, is spoken word artist and also just working in the art can you talk to us more about that and also if if you want to explore more expand more tell our audience just about um your life and origin story I, I would love to hear it oh sure yeah uh so yes I have my degree in theater I went to Sac State because I'm from Sac so I'm from Sacramento okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I went to Sac State and I transferred out here and got my degree in theater arts and dance from CSULA 
And so all my background is theater. And then it was like my first year out here in Los Angeles, a peer of mine from college introduced me to this world of spoken word poetry. Like that didn't really exist in Sacramento. Um, I was doing poems and stuff like that, but spoken word poetry is like this whole different element to poetry, you know? And I was like, what is this? I was watching people do, and I'm like, I can do this guy, like already being an actor and having this background in theater and spoken word is literally just the performative aspect of the poetry part. I'm like, okay, I can really do this. I think I can. So then I just started writing. And one day I went to an open mic lounge and I was like, I'm about to just get up here and do it. And the way that the whole atmosphere shifted after I did my poem was confirmation that God was like, I have gifted you to also do this. And I remember, and I know for some things, I'm like, man, this sounds so spiritual. But for me, this is my journey. And I remember when I was in college, I remember hearing God tell me, Candace, I'm gonna need you to stop acting for like a year. So for a whole year, I did no auditions, no acting. I did nothing but spoken word ministry. So I was doing conferences, workshops, going to different churches, open mic, like doing nothing but sharing my joy of the Lord through my spoken word and also my own testimonies and life struggles, right? So literally just sharing my truth, but in spoken word poetry. And I remember God telling me, because at first I was like, "Uh, hold up, father. You know, I'm not trying to argue with you, Jesus, but I came out here for acting. You want me to do spoken word? Like what? But I was obedient. And I remember God telling me, he said, I'm going to bless your acting career through spoken word. Mm. Fast forward, y'all, seven years later, I'm on the TV show, Good Trouble. The executives, Miss Joanna Johnson, I love her, Bradley Brewig, Peter Page, they amazing, shout out Good Trouble. Um, <laughs> they found out that I do spoken word and Miss Joanna reached out to me and allowed me to write an entire piece as my character, Yari. And that was the first time that my spoken word ever was on like a mainstream, like on television. And I was like, wow, God. and that was seven years. And y'all know seven years is, means completion, right? That was the number seven means completion. Seven years after God has spoke that over my life, I ended up booking that. And then Freeform had me book a series where they used me to market season three of Good Trouble. So I got to write all these spoken word pieces, and like all of my own art based on the season three of the show. And then now to be cast in a show that highlights nothing but heightened verse and spoken word. I'm like, okay, that's nothing but God, like nothing but him, you know? So I- I'm very, very grateful and, and I think it's interesting because a lot of people are like, oh, are you doing spoken? Because people know me as a poet, you know? And I thought that was interesting. I remember joking to my friend and I'm like, when did I become a poet first? Like, I've always been an actor. Like, don't people know that I'm an actor? <laughs> you know? But the way that God had kind of got my start for me was through spoken word poetry, which is what he ordained over my life now going on almost 10 years ago. So I just think that's amazing. And um. Yeah. And I love children. I love working with the babies. That's another part of my background. Like I teach theater, I do coaching and stuff. And I love, I feel that God has really blessed me or so my pastor tells me with this gift of being able to also teach. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's weird y'all. Like I can see potential in people. I can see something in them where a parent might think that that child is acting out. And I'm like, nah, you just need to redirect that energy. That child has potential bring them to my acting class and I promise you what you think is misbehaving is really just them trying to find themselves and they need this creative output this outlet just let me give it to them I promise you I promise you your baby is good (laughs) yeah so I just I love the babies and my whole goal in life and in this industry is to God willing make a difference through my art and inspire especially these young babies living in the time that we live in right now, because I'm not willing to compromise who I am or what I believe to make it in this industry. I will not, you know, and I want, I want young kids growing up to be able to see, dang, this person, she stayed true to herself. She stayed true to her beliefs and she still was able to walk in the doors of Hollywood. You know, like I didn't have to change myself. I'm going to always be me. (laughs) (laughs) People be like, you have so much joy and energy. I'm like, I did like this as a 
kid, I can't change it. Like it's who I am. <laughs> never, no. never change. Are you kidding? Never change. Never. And, oh my God. <laughs> No, Candace, seriously. Oh, no. I, I mean, watching, the, watching the show, watching blind spotting, I'm like, everyone needs a friend like Janelle. Everybody needs that ride or die who speaks the truth and keeps you in check and keeps you energy. I mean, that's how I feel about you also, mm -hmm. Candace. It's like, everyone needs someone like you in their life. Wow. I'm very, uh, you're yeah. giving me a lot of just happy energy. Oh. So yeah. So anyway, back to the interview. <laughs> <Y'all>, no, yeah. <laughs> burning up have some margarita don't worry i think that's a strawberry margarita <laughs> maybe that's not helping maybe that's not helping yeah, yeah. <laughs> well so your character janelle has so many great scenes with just every character i feel like mm -hmm. you know you you get to really have a lot of fun with i mean mama nancy i can we even just get started on mama nancy mama. <laughs> um so i i just want to know from your perspective as an actress like who, who do you, obviously you love working with all of them, but what are just some really fun back and forths that you have or, or specific scene that you just, because every time you come on, it's just like, okay, what's going to happen? Like, what are we in for now? You know, but like, yeah. what's it like a, like a scene or just someone that you really just vibe really well with just organically. I, I will say, I feel like I would say Jasmine and I clicked really well. And because people don't know this, we shot this. Well, you guys know we shot this during a pandemic. Yeah. But what people don't know is that we weren't allowed the privilege to do what you would do if you didn't have a pandemic, which is like a lot of us actors, we get together, you hang out, you know, you get to build that camaraderie and that that teamwork and stuff. But we weren't allowed that privilege. So the very first scene I had to do was the best friend scene with Jasmine. And here we are having to create. We literally, hi, I'm Candace. Hi, I'm Jasmine. And we literally had to create years of friendship like that, you know? And we literally just looked at each other. She was like, sis, I got you. I was like, I got you too. We in this together. And we just went for it, you know? And I think it helps because, you know, she did her own individual work. I did my own individual work. So when you come prepared like that, and then you allow yourself to trust each other, it's like that magic just kind of unfolds naturally, you know? So I'm grateful to her being the lead of the show and being, you know, the, the head of the show where she offers that space, you know, where it's like, hey, we can trust each other because we in this together, getting thrown into this, right? Um, I also will say, I think any scenes where we actually all got to be together, you know, like that was really yeah. fun. I feel like episode six, you know, seeing yes. all of us sitting down at the table and having yes. this extremely important conversation was beautiful. Like, I love any of those moments. Um, Earl and I, obviously, you guys get, you know, it's like a whole situation happening with Janelle. A whole situation. <laughs> so, um, you know, I feel like, especially in the beginning, a lot of my scenes were also me and him, you know, so I felt that too, where we had to really just kind of build that trust out of nowhere with each other and be like, I'm nervous. He's like, I'm nervous. And I'm like, hey, we're going to be nervous together, but let's just do it, you know? So, yeah, I, I mean, there's not one person in particular. It's like, you kind of have your your relationships with each person individually because we have individual scenes. But the fun, the main fun part is when we all get to come together and it's like, okay, now the family is together, you know? Yeah. yeah. Episode six for an Emmy. I'm just putting it out there. Come on. That yeah. episode, we haven't seen seven come or eight on. yet, but yeah. that episode, I could watch it over and over again. I mean, yeah, I'm still laughing at the Wiz and Bobby Caldwell joke. I will forever. <laughs> I will. For, I want to like put that on a on a tattoo somewhere. I I had to explain to my fiance about that. He's a white boy from Texas, anyways. Um, and I have a Bobby Caldwell story, but anyways. Um, <laughs> It was that went deep. Um, yeah. It's one uh, of my favorite episodes so far. So yeah. Well, but come on, episode five. five when you got that script, because we so just FYI, we've had Alana on, but we had Alana on not for blind spotting. Okay. A film that she wrote and directed. So okay. then fast forward to episode five, we're like, what in the? <laughs> yeah, this woman wrote that. We need her back. Yeah, yeah but uh, but also. Anyway, Ange and I have like a similar experience, sort of, but not at a beach. Go ahead, Candace. <laughs> yeah, no, episode relatable, five. Relatable, relatable. Yeah, episode five, we really had to trust each other. Like we were, I had did a post that we were in the trenches together. Like we really were. Um, episode five, that was a week of us shooting an episode. It could have been really difficult 
if we didn't have that teamwork, you know, me and the other girls, we were just like, man, listen, we stripping, we running naked into the, oh, you running naked too. Okay. Like, and we would talk to each other. Like, I'm like, are you wearing pasties? Are you not wearing, you know, and, and they'll ask, like, well, do you want to be close? And, and I'm like, listen, if, if the girls are doing this and I'm with them, like we all a team, you know, so whatever they're going to do, I'm, I'm rocking right there with them. Um, and stuff. And yeah, episode five was very difficult. Like we all had bruises. It was just, episode five was a lot. It was extremely exhilarating, very fun, but it was, it was a lot. So, (laughs) well, and you're on Baker beach. It's freezing. It's beautiful, but it's freezing always. Listen, Miss Erin, she's like, you're going to do this in one take. Y'all running to the beach. Four takes later, we was like, Miss Erin, you said, I was like, our titties is out, it's hot, yes. it's freezing in here. Yes. Out here, I was like, Lord, yeah. But we was in it together. It helps when you are not like alone, you know? So we all had to just feed off each other's energy. And we was like, you can't feel your feet. I can't feel mine either, but we're going to do it, you know? <laughs> um, for episode six, though, the reason why I feel that that is one of my favorite characters is for one, because it's so dialogue heavy, mm-hmm. right? And then two, I, I just really love so much that Raphael and David, again, are just creating this space for someone like Janelle to exist. Mm-hmm. I, I have seen many a shows where the dark skinned black woman is the sassy one. You guys will know, I cannot tell you how many times throughout my theater career and TV where I've been asked, oh, can you just sass it up a little, you know, yeah. sassy. And I so bad want to be like, what do you mean by that? I know what you're saying, you know? And, um, yeah, the fact that I'm able to create this character, like I said, who's so multidimensional, like Janelle is not the stereotypical black girl. She's not the one who's always yelling and angry in a scene. She's not bitter. She's not this, um, you know, single mother who's on welfare. Like she is someone who is trying to discover herself. She is a woman who is bold and rocking her locks. You know, she's a woman who is just like free spirited in how she wants to navigate life through faith and relationships and I just love being able to showcase that as a dark skinned black woman. And for us to have that conversation, which was very hard for me during filming because there's so many things where Janelle and I are the same. And as a dark skinned black, with that whole speech about my hair, about having the light skinned best friend, my sisters are like, there's six of us. I'm the eldest of six. Woo, look. Wow. Yes, I'm the eldest of six kids and there's five girls and one boy and he's the baby. And out of five of us, like all six of us, we're like all different complexions. And one of my sisters are as light skinned as Ashley, you know? And so that whole part right there, that whole section about the whole colorism thing that still unfortunately exists within the black community heavily, it meant, it, it meant so much to me that we are having this conversation on TV. And for me as a black, you know, a chocolate sister, being able to really share the experience that many of my other chocolate sisters continue to go through about not feeling worthy enough, about not feeling beautiful enough, about our hair not being the right texture, about living up to these unrealistic Eurocentric ideals of what beauty is supposed to be. And nowadays everything is about perfection. The fake this, the fake that everything is, I'm so proud that I get to naturally represent okay this is what a black woman who she is unapologetically she loves her locks she's a thick sister okay curvaceous and vivacious amen you know and I just love because I want it's so important to me for little black girls and black women to see Janelle and like I said earlier to be able to see themselves which is another reason why I love one of my favorite poems that I got to write for Good Trouble was Dear Black Girl. Mm. And that that Mm. poem is so important because it's about not pinning us against each other because all shades of black is gorgeous, okay? And also realizing that because my skin is darker, that does not make me less than. Mm -hmm. Like I am still just as worthy. I am still just as beautiful and I'm still just as called and qualified by God as anybody else, okay? So, um, yeah. Oh, Lord. Y'all feel like I just went on the hole. <laughs> no, keep going. You're making our job easy. I'll just sit yeah. back here and relax. <laughs> keep going, We're, going. We're at a TED Talk. 
featuring <laughs> Candace Nicholas. Let's start calling them Candace Talks. Yes, Listen, Candace I'm, Talks. I'm manifesting that too, though. And yes, yes. Listen, I'm manifesting Ted Talks. I'm listen. I'm well, still. Manifesting I was about to say something like kind of fuck Ted. Let's just have Candace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're over ted we're over yeah. ted yeah. Big yeah. thanks see, see you later the ted it's the been real ted we'll see oh you later. god <laughs> but no yeah it is really something there because people tell me all that they were like you be dropping gin like you should have a podcast yes. you should have fun well, you know so people yeah. I, I had this series that i was doing on instagram called candace car confessions oh yeah where i would literally just sit in my car and if anything was on my heart I would honestly and openly talk about it I wouldn't edit anything everything was raw and real because that's something about my social media I all that fake it till you make it crap I don't do any of that like I understand my calling and my purpose in this life and I want to be as authentic as possible because how can I help someone else who may be on the brink of suicide or who may be wanting to over everything if I'm not even being authentically myself like how that's I'm not being used fully to the capacity that God wants to use me, you know? And it's just, I genuinely, oh God, like the best compliments I can ever get is not about my gifts or my talents. It's literally like saying your poem saved my life. Or I saw your one woman show and I had that kind of mom too growing up. I thought I was alone. Like I wanted to end my life, but listening to you, that's the best, like, Father God, you use someone like me to make a difference in this person's life. I ain't nobody special. Like, thank you, Jesus. Like, I'm grateful, you know? So listen, y'all, I'm, you keep talking. Uh, can you talk? Look. No, please. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't want you to overheat. Yeah, don't oh overheat. Do you have no. anything on under that sweater? Maybe it's the sweater. I know, the LA? You don't need a sweater. I can't, I'm I can't take right this now. out off. It's, just a, it's a shirt. It's not a sweater. Oh, okay. Oh. You don't get a whole nother shirt. <laughs> well, okay. Hey, it's episode five. Let's look at episode right. five. Where are the pasties? Yeah. yeah. God, just just no. cover. Just cover. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was thinking yeah. that, though. I was like, they're on B- Baker Beach. Even just not having a sweater on is freezing. Anyway, go oh. on, Erin. <laughs> oh, oh, it's my turn. Um, <laughs> and, and do you have any more questions you want me to? Well, yes. I want I, you to. Well, I, I, I could talk to you forever, but I wanted to tell well, you yeah, that I was at the L.A. premiere at the Hollywood Cemetery oh, and yeah. I saw you stunning in your black suit. It was it yes. silk. I don't know. It was, yeah. it was <laughs> fly, whatever it was. It was so <laughs> beautiful. And I was like, I'm going to go say hi to her at the after after party. But I couldn't find you. Were you there? Were you yeah. Like, oh, God, yes. I was turning up. I was dancing. I was dancing all night. The burlesque show, the band. Yeah, I missed that part. I was in the other room. Mm-hmm. I was mad because I saw videos. And I said to my friends, I was like, where? Did, did you see the know? fire? The fire eater? Oh, no, I missed that whole. I don't know what I was doing in the other room. We was turning up back then. <laughs> okay. But you were right. there for the band dancing? And you were dancing? In yes, that I was dancing. Yeah. We was having a grand old look, time. Look, look, I would have danced with you. Look, she's not telling you. Like, she had a good time at the premiere. And then she got to the after after party. Uh-huh. And she had a she had more of a good time. And then she met I some just, dude who gave oh. her who got you two tequila shots. Is two that right? Tequila shots. He was a dancer. No, it wasn't. Oh, it was no, 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 not like thing. some dude. It wasn't like she's hooking up. But the 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 funny part of that story beyond all that was the next day she's like, God, I don't know why I'm so hungover. And her sister was like, It's and she's like, I was drinking whiskey all night. And her sister's like, Well, that guy bought you two shots of whiskey at the end. Uh, tequila, so. tequila, tequila. Tequila. Sorry. Oh. Tequila. So well, she mixed, and that's why I'm like, of course she missed you guys. I mean, <laughs> I was looking for you though. I was like, where is everyone? I just thought you had a secret room. I thought you guys had a secret room at the bar. No. Okay, well, here's the thing. I didn't know there was an after after party. So I was getting my swerve on at the main after party at the Hollywood <laughs> Cemetery, thinking that was going to be it. And then all of a sudden at the end of that, I get invited to another party. So I had used up all of my you know, brain power at the Hollywood Cemetery. So by the time I got to the other place, I told them, I was like, I tried to find everyone. No one was there. And now I'm finding <laughs> that Benjamin was there. You were there. Yeah. I, yeah, every, everyone, was, was everyone was probably there. Everyone was probably, I was probably yeah. dancing with you. I just had, yeah. I, don't know. I was doing salsa. I don't know. I was Okay. No, we had, we probably did because I was over there saucing. 
Okay. So yes, I don't know how we miss each other, Angela, because I show I took my jacket off in there. The room wasn't that big either. It wasn't that yeah, big. Yeah, it wasn't. Okay. Maybe it's because okay. I changed my outfit. You didn't see oh, me. Oh, another you one. Changed. Benjamin also is like, yeah, everyone changed. changed. Yeah, no, we all changed. Jasmine, Rafa, uh, yeah, we all changed. Rafa, <laughs> you know? cha- see? Yeah, everyone. Oh, my God. Jaylen, That's what it was. We all had different outfits on. Oh, we I didn't get the we memo sent her, that we, we needed. We sent her to the premiere, which Rafa was very nice to set her up with. And she did do her one job, so cool. Yeah, Thanks. but, you know, they had free, <laughs> but they had free blankets. I got one for all of my yeah, that's true. That's friends true. here. Yeah. So oh, I did something I see Erin. Erin tried to go She Angela, I got you a blanket, hey. Erin. Yes, yeah. Damn. Well, I have to give her shit. Everyone Every was time. there. Everyone Every was time. There. One and job. I was looking one for job. You. I was looking for you. <laughs> Yeah, my job. I, Angela, even if you go to my Instagram, there's literally pictures <laughs> that we What your outfit was? Yes, Maybe I'm in the me, background. Let's Jaylen, look. She's probably me. in the background. Yeah, I'm in the background. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, go to our, we posted pictures of the out. Oh here. my God. <laughs> yeah, you can't no, send Jaylen. us anywhere, Candace. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this and I, I hope that you'll enjoy this because we're, we're trying to do this with more guests. Um, but we started this thing through the pandemic because we're like, we need, we need something to like be happy about. Right. And think about our happiness and what brings us joy. So right now, Candice, uh, what's your moment of pleasure? And what I will say to that too is don't freak out. <laughs> Uh, earlier we recorded just our basic bitches is like when we catch up and blah, 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 talk about our lives yeah. and our moment of pre- pleasure right now is Benefer 2.0, Ben and JLo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, it we're, doesn't have we're, to be serious or no, it does, be serious. we're embarrassed that that's our moment of pleasure. It's right just now, anything but, that has brought you joy recently, yeah. surprisingly, you know, yes. just like it could be small. It could be big. Yeah. It could be this moment uh, with us. It could be strawberry margarita. I don't know. <laughs> um, you guys, honestly, I will say, because I literally just posted this. Y'all, it's every time an episode comes out. Like, mm. when I, oh my God, I bet not start crying. Candace, you better fuck. You get it together. No, no, no. We <laughs> cry. Janelle, we, we Janelle cry was crying like we, that. We, <laughs> We cry all the time on Bitch Talk. We just cried like an hour ago. Yeah, so. don't worry about it. Yeah, We'll cry with you probably. Y'all, like, really, like, every time I see myself up there, because, again, the thing with manifesting, I don't know, because people are like, can you believe that you're on billboards and all this stuff? And I'm like, you know what? I can believe it because I've been dreaming about this stuff and speaking into existence since I was a little girl. But it's like, I still can't believe it. You know, I'm like, dang God. So every time I see an episode, I'm like, that's really me, Jesus. Like every week someone can go and watch me on TV. Like, and I get to play like a role like this on this type of show. So every week, y'all, I'm just happy. (laughs) So man, I am not finna cry. I'm about to give it together. (laughs) No, do it. No shame. This is a safe space. Yeah. And we cry literally all the time on the show. Yeah. And (laughs) stuff like this, like being able to do interviews and like like literally live in my dream, you know, and and I'm just like, I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. And the fact that I'm here is only because I never gave up because I never lost faith, you know, and people, a lot of times too, I just want to say this, that people think manifesting or believing in God. Sometimes people treat God like a genie and people need to understand that faith without works is dead. So you can have all the faith. You can believe and manifest all you want to, but you have to put work behind your action. You can't just sit there and expect it. You have to give something for God to bless. So whether it be like me doing my spoken word or me doing a one woman show or me, I know if you know that you have a gift inside of you and God has given you a dream, just go do it. Don't worry about, oh, I don't have the resources. Don't worry about, I don't have the right people or don't no one know who I am or whatever. Stop it. God has already qualified you. He's already put the gift and vision in you. So you just need to just do it wherever you are, just do it. And then he will bless it. You know, my pastor always say the why is our business. The how is his how something's going to happen, how it's going to unfold, what the role is going to be, what the show, that's his business. I have no control over that. But my why 
the why I'm doing something, the purpose, the, the meaning, all that kind of stuff, the motivation, that's what I have control over. And um, yeah, I just went on a whole tangent. <laughs> We're here for it. Beautiful. But I just, you know, I'm just, I'm very grateful and something I always tell people in interviews, I've told people, oh my goodness, can y'all hear that ding it? Yeah, I was going to ask you, are you okay? Is that your fire alarm? Gosh, I'm like, why is people, shut up, I'm in a meeting. (laughs) I don't know how to turn off my things on the laptop, you know, the notifications. I hate that, yeah. So I'm like, dang, can they hear this? Am I tripping? we're going to have to redo the whole interview. Yeah. I'm so yeah. sorry. We're going to start from the top. Yeah. Char, <laughs> stop recording. <laughs> but I do want to say this last thing here, because I've been asked this in other interviews and stuff, right? And even in the past, like before, you know, blind spotting, all this stuff. And people would say, you know, did you always know you wanted to be famous? Or are you, you want to be famous or whatever? I always tell people, no, I'm not in this industry to become famous. I'm in this industry to fulfill purpose. Fame is the byproduct of me fulfilling purpose. So all this other stuff will come. But my thinking is not, oh, I want to be known. I want to be verified. I want people to know I'm a celebrity. No, that's not the stuff that's important. The purpose is me, is how me using my art to make a difference, to inspire using my life, my journey as a testimony to inspire people. And all this other stuff will be added onto me. But I'm not seeking that that gold pot at the end of the rainbow. You know, what I'm seeking is, God, I wanna make sure that I leave here completely empty. We are all put on this earth full. We are all put on this earth with a purpose. Even if people feel like they don't have one, I promise you, you do baby girl, you do baby boy. Everyone has a purpose. Your assignment, you came here full. Your assignment is to leave empty. And that is something my pastor always say. So if I fulfill purpose, all this other stuff will come, but it's not what the reason. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So I, I have to say, Candace, in seven years of bitch talk, we've never asked, did you always know you wanted to be famous? Right, Aaron? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think, yeah, that's, yeah, that's not what it's about. Yeah, I would never right. ask a question to right. begin with. No, you'd be surprised. Like, I don't know why it's that question. And because, I'm like, look, because, because, well, we could go on a tangent too about press yeah. people um, right. and press people not doing their research and not. Uh, anyways, um, and and kind of not, not really, giving a shit, not really caring. Yeah, yeah. So no, y'all, and that is truth. Because sometimes people ask me questions, and I'm like, um, I wasn't in that show. Like that wasn't. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. That wasn't. The- oh God. Yeah. I'd be like, we need to wrap this up real quick. <laughs> like, don't you, don't even, go to the dark side. <laughs> right. You didn't even do your research. Like you have no idea. Like what? Okay. Praise God. Bless. Yeah. <laughs> and also, <laughs> like, press people not being humble. Mm. That's, a, that's another that's a whole other wow thing. now again y'all this is pre-blind spotted so this right, is right, 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 right. i'm talking about other interviews that i've done you know being on other stuff and everything like that especially like yeah. theater and being a part of shows like that it's usually around those circuits where i get oh, asked very yeah. weird questions and yeah. i'm like first of all maybe i'm famous in the spirit but in the natural i'm a regular person so i don't even know what you're talking you know what i mean like yeah I, in the spirit, sure, I'm a celebrity, but in the natural to me, I'm a regular person here to fulfill an assignment and hopefully change people's lives through my art. Period. And a story. Boom. Candace <laughs> Nicholas Lippman playing hey, we're Janelle gonna, on blind spotting. Thank we're going to dance salsa at some point to make up for my, my having yeah, a good time. Having even. a good time. Yeah. We have and to I'll protect you again. what I'm wearing. So you won't be looking for the suit. <laughs> I was, yeah, for, like, I was looking for Earl's red suit. I was looking for your no, black suit. Yeah. For Rafa's gray black thing. I had the. No, I none of us red. had on our red carpet clothes. We all did. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Angela still wear her red carpet. She was. She was. I did not wearing. get the memo. I did she not slept, get that memo. She slept in her premiere outfit. I actually That's slept in it and woke up the next day oh, and got, you and really got really breakfast really. in it because I was so hungover. I was like, I got to eat. Wow, bro. You been but you want to know, and this also tells you how much of us, how we're all on the same page in terms of chemistry as a cast, because it wasn't like we all planned that. 
we didn't all plan to be like, hey, y'all, we're going to all change. Now, maybe me, Jasmine, and Jalen, you know, we were in the, in the group. We have our girl group chat, and we're like, hey, what color are you wearing? Well, what you wearing? And, and I remember Jalen mentioning that she was changing her outfit. Me and Jess was like, you got an outfit change? Hold on, girl. <laughs> you know? But other than that, it wasn't like we all came together as a cast and was like, hey, y'all, we're going to change clothes. We just all showed up, and everybody had on something different, so... Oh, will, you, will you look at your pictures to see if you see me in the background and share with us if you do? I was by the, why I was by the right way, there in that in that main floor. Just and salsa. she has a cane. You wouldn't have missed her. She has a cane for her bad knee right now. <laughs> oh. I mean, yeah, it's a whole thing, Candace. Look, and we don't have time for that. You dance a salsa. You just one lady. But Candace, I call it my slurricane. My cane. My slur cane. Here, right here. I know. He says bitch stuff. Gonna- Says okay. Good stuff. Oh, wait. okay. She still got the king. Oh, I have yeah. to have surgery in yeah, a couple weeks, yeah. but I was dancing salsa that night. That's how drunk yeah. I was. I was like, Listen. I feel no pain. <laughs> if 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 nobody about to stop my, you know, stop me no. from was a person. No. That is you, girl. She's yes. like, I got my king. Yes. Ooh, she's, she's a little bit Janelle also. Uh, hey. no, I'm like, I think I'm where Janelle and Trish meet. I think I'm a little Trish. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're a little Trish. Mm. I don't know. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you're oh, a little all right. yeah, yeah. Let's it's... go before this turns into a fight. Yeah. Candace, <laughs> come back anytime. Thank you uh, so thank much. You're thank so you. lovely. You're yes. just lovely. Aww. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate y'all. Yes. Thank you for having me on. Yes. Watch the next episode. Oh, oh my are God. You Seven are and you eight. Kidding? We cannot wait. This is this Ugh. might air somewhere after that. But yeah, we cannot yeah. wait. And the show is just a game changer. There's yeah. nothing Man. like it. So Man. congratulations. So, thank y'all. Thank you. I'm so grateful. You're thank so, you. You're so deserving of yeah. all, all of it. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Man. Don't change. Woo! Don't change. Or actually change after this because you're hot. Oh, yeah, change. But don't change. No, no, and I'm going to keep it real 100 with y'all, okay? I'm As soon as y'all know how that feeling when you take off the bra and you... Oh, yes. Let it go. That's what's about to happen. I'm going to turn off all these lights. I should have had my air conditioning on. That's why I'm burning up. I turn oh, okay. in, in the liquor and then I'm excited. Then it's, yes. listen, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot going on. <laughs> See, y'all, good thing I don't be wearing makeup. So my whole face would have peeled by now. <laughs> I tried, but look, y'all, I tried to do a little eyeliner or a mascara for you guys. Oh, I really you. don't know how to, I really don't know how to wear makeup. Neither so, do you. Yeah. Animal. I don't know how to do it at all. Yeah, me too. Like, I don't like it. Yeah, I suck. It's not my jam. Yeah. It's not my jam. Yeah, it's you, not. You don't need it anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Don't need you. it. So I want to let y'all know I did put some effort. I was like, oh, let me put some mascara on. Oh. You can't even tap. <laughs> Thank you. But all that foundation, whatever stuff they be doing, I was like, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. It's not good for your skin anyway. Yeah, I'm like, I'm about to get this regular face. Yeah, so, you gotta let it breathe. You gotta let it breathe. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh gosh. Okay, y'all. We gonna keep on talking. We could. I mean, uh, okay. We could. I can't well, wait till we meet in person. That's all yeah. I know. Yay. Big hugs. Big hugs, please. Yes. And then we gonna drop, drop a load. Salsa. Yes. Yeah. And hey, salsa. salsa. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah it's a lot of it's candace it's a lot of shoulders <laughs> yeah. a lot of shoulders well i can't move anything else i'm sitting and my knee's bad what do you want from me you know what angela you is hilarious girl yeah, Ooh, That's why I keep her yeah. <laughs> lots of laughs uh, i can't oh believe God. everyone was there yes that's what's funny i was like i have to report you to you guys no one was at the after party and the writers nigel was there alana was alana there i don't remember i didn't see her even at the uh cemetery sorry Char. See, i was i was a little bit lit too so <laughs> i was dancing with everybody <laughs> i didn't even see her at the cemetery i was looking for her at the cemetery no, but i saw was. you no, at the cemetery sure i saw okay she yeah because we both we met in the restroom <laughs> I was like, oh, she's like, Janelle. I mean, Candace. I said, girl, it's okay. I'm Janelle. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, y'all. Oh, well, I mean, all the blessings and all the good juju. Seriously. Yeah. Thank you. Y'all too. Y'all too. And please come back on for Candace Corner or Candace <laughs> yeah. Talk or whatever Candace we're going to call it. Yeah. Candace Corner. That is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all should see, yeah, my Candace Car Confessions. That's, all right. Yeah. And people- okay. 
people really, they've even been missing. They're like, what's been going on with your Candace car confessions? You haven't done them. You know, so that's a little segment that I do to try to inspire people. And yeah, so I should. I, I just, I just hope blind spotting is also getting you other calls too. <sighs> Praise God. I, you know, and that's something too, Aaron, that people don't talk about because everyone thinks that you make it yes. when they see you book this role. And it's like, literally i am still over here grind look y'all i'm still over here manifesting Ow. Doing my stuff. i'm creating a whole new uh, vision board like they're like the grind never stops for me and i've been grinding all of my life i've been surviving all of my life and i'm now finally getting to a place where i don't have to be in survival mode you know yeah. where i can breathe a little bit but a little being the operative word you know what i'm saying like People think because you book something, it's like, oh, you made it. I'm like, no, yeah. my foot is finally in the door, but I haven't even touched the surface of what I know God has called me to do. Like, I know I want to write. I want to direct. I want to produce my own work. You know, there's so much more than me just being the actor or the poet. You know, I know, I just know that what God has for me is way bigger than what it still looks like right now. You know, so I'm still manifesting and believing for stuff because this is just the beginning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I <laughs> I hope I hope in your manifestation you have that Janelle has some spoken word in season two of Blind Spot. Well, we haven't seen episode seven or eight yet, but oh, it's okay. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> that was I had to do the Instagram takeover, and that was a lot of people kept asking, "Are you gonna spit? Are you gonna?" And I was like, "Unfortunately, not this season. No, season Janelle. two. Yes, God willing, God willing, right. season two, right. she could just spit something, you know? But right now, my sis Jasmine and, and Earl, like they holding it down, they killing it, you know? I'm extremely mm -hmm. proud of Jasmine, you know, with the verses and the, the poetry and stuff. So yeah, I'm just grateful and you know, all in God's timing. So I'm, I don't feel no ways about it. I'm grateful to be a part of this. Okay. So, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Amazing. So yeah. Whatever God want to do, whatever he put on the heart of the writers and all the, and the producers and lines, all that stuff. I'm just, I'm a vessel God. So use me. Amen. <laughs> We love you, Candace. I mean, we don't, we don't have to say anything else. So I know y'all want to keep me on here. I know, but I do. <laughs> but I, I'm, I have to. Use, I have to pee. Actually, I drank so much wine. <laughs> oh gosh, they're gonna be like, Candace is crazy. Okay. No, no. <laughs> you're everything we needed and more. And more. Oh man, this I love y'all. This Thank is you amazing. So much. Yeah. Go. Okay. So you have a good evening. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions. <laughs>